So today we do translations, reflections, rotations, and there are a couple of things you might want to print out before you do this because this is kind of a hands-on thing and it's a little bit tough sometimes to translate it to video. But if you look at the PowerPoint that I had up for 13.1 and 13.2, you'll see that there's a page of dot paper. You might want to print that out so that you can draw on that as we go along. And then further down in the slides, there is a picture of a giraffe or a horse with a really long neck, I'm not entirely sure. You might want to print that one out too so that you can actually fold it and trace it. And then the slide after that with the triangle and the line, um, you might want to print that one out also so that you can actually do the activities as we go along. Unfortunately, I may not be able to do all of them because I don't have a protractor that works on a tablet. So as best we can, we're going to go through translations, reflections, and give you some ideas to what these things are and what they do. So if you're following along, this is 13.1 and 13.2. So in general, any type of rigid motion, so it could be reflecting something across the line, it could be translating something, you pick up a triangle and you move it three units down and four units to the right, that's a translation. And anything that preserves length or distance is called an isometry. Now by preserving, we mean it's the same thing. So if you took a rectangle and you moved it five units to the right, the sides of those rectangles are still the same length each of the angle measures are still the same. So that's what we mean when we say preserving. It's the same thing as you move it. Um, any function from a plane to itself that's a one-to-one -one correspondence is called a transformation of that plane. So if you take a rectangle on the coordinate plane and you move it or you reflect it or you rotate it, every point that was in the original one now has a corresponding point on the new one. Any angle that was on the original figure now has an angle in the new figure, and so we call that a transformation. Just so that we're consistent in using terms, the original figure, we call those, ter those pieces the pre-image. So everything on the original rectangle or triangle, whatever it is that you're moving, is the pre-image. Once you perform that operation, now the new one is called the image. So sometimes we might call a point, let's say, on the pre-image A, and we would name that corresponding point on the new image something like A prime. That's what that little tick mark means. That means that that point is related to the original one. It's not exactly the same. Something happened, but yet there is some sort of a correspondence between that original point and that new point. All right? And we say that each point in the pre-image, that's the original figure, corresponds to exactly one point on the image and the other direction as well. So when you take that object and move it, you're basically moving it point by point, right? If you wanted to take stuff from one desk to another, you might take all the things that are on one desk and move it one by one over to the other desk, and now the two of them would be related to each other. All right, translation. So translation, you're moving something. Each point moves the same amount in the same direction. So if you want to take something and translate it six units down and four units to the right, Every point has to be moved that same amount. Otherwise, the new one is not going to look like the old one. We talk about a translation by a vector or a slide arrow. So if I want to move something three units down and three units to the right, then I might end up with something that looks like this. I'm going to move it three units down, three units to the right, and I'm going to put an arrow at the end. And that arrow tells me in what direction it's going. But that vector is actually a measure of how far it moves. So it's not just saying go in that direction. It's saying go in that direction by that amount. Um, dot paper is helpful. So is a coordinate plane because you don't have to measure things as much with protractors. Although certainly you can do these translations with a protractor and a piece of plain white paper. Just at the beginning, it's probably easier to learn and demonstrate with something on a piece of dot paper. So let's see how good my drawing skills are on here. Suppose I've got a triangle. I'm going to try my best to draw a triangle that looks like this. So I'm purposely trying not to draw it isosceles, or I'm trying not to draw it equilateral or isosceles. So I'm going to call that point A. I'm going to call that point B. I'm going to call that point C. And now my slide arrow is going to be this. And so my slide arrow is going to come down. All right, it's a little boring slide arrow, but we'll make it. What does this slide arrow do? It says whatever point you're starting at, go two units down, and then go two units to the right. So I'm going to take all these points, and I'm going to go two units down, and then two units to the right. So I'm going to take point A, I'm going to move it two units down, and two units to the right. So that, <laughs> that new point A prime is actually the old point C. All right, so there's my first point. Now take point B, move it two units down, and two units to the right, there's my B prime. All right, now take point C and move it two units down 
and two units to the right, there's my C prime. So here's A prime, B prime, C prime. I connect the dots. And you notice that I've taken that original figure. I moved it two units down and two units to the right. One thing you'll notice is that these types of isometries, in this case, it's a translation, it preserves what we call orientation. So if you went from the top left, bottom left, then right, it went A, B, C. The new figure, there's your A prime, goes A prime, B prime, C prime. Whatever the length of this side is, the length of that side there will be the same. Same thing with the angle measures. This angle measure here and that angle measure there are the same. So when we do a translation like this, we preserve angle measure, we preserve the lengths of the sides, we preserve the orientation. So all of those things are preserved. So let's say I took another figure. And I'll just make this one a rectangle. And I can label these points also as A, B, C, D. And this time I'm going to make my vector translation go four units down. Uh, yeah, it's going to have to go down because I... <laughs> I'm at the top of the page. Four units down and one to the right. So let's see if I can make this vector arrow like that. There we go. All right. So each point now has to go four down and one to the right. So take point A and move it one, two, three, four units down and one to the right. There's my A prime. Take point B and move it one, two, three, four units down and one to the right. There's my B prime. And once you've got that first segment in place, if you wanted to, you could actually go like this. Look, BC is two dots down, so I'm going to go two dots down, and there's my C prime. And then I'm going to go across and connect the dots. That's my D prime. All right, so all of these points have been moved two units down, uh, four units down, and two units to the right. Okay. Oddly enough, it is possible to go up and to the left. I just happen to start on the top left corner of my page, so I don't have that ability. So if you want to start with a picture, let's say down here somewhere, then you can do some examples of moving up and to the left. That works fine too. So that vector is more than just telling me in what direction. It's actually telling me how much. And so if you notice, it goes down and over by just that amount. All right, let's take a look at this triangle over here. We got triangle MTR. I've got three vertices. So the first thing is let's plot the vertices. So negative three, one, two, three, negative one. So there's the first vertex. All right, we'll call that M. at negative 3, negative 1, and then t is at 0, 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, there's my t, and then r is at 2, 2, so over 2 and up 2, there's a third vertex, All right? So there's 1, I'm going to connect my dots over here, and third side. Okay, now it says it's translated by vector 4, negative 2. So here's the vector 4, negative 2. This is not an ordered pair. This is telling me how far to move each of the points. Now remember they go x coordinate, y coordinate. So what this is saying is that I should go four in the positive x direction. Well, four in the positive x direction is four to the right, and two in the negative y direction is two down. So I should take each of those points and move them four to the right and two down. So I've got two options. One of them is I could actually just take each point and say, all right, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four to the right, and then one, two down, and there is my corresponding point, right? There's my M prime. Same thing with T, right? I can go one, two, three, four to the right, and two down. There's my T prime. I put a little prime in to say that it's related to the original one. And then R, which is this point here, goes one, two, three, four to the right, and two down actually it lands on an axis. All right, so I can connect the dots. And I got my new triangle. The other thing is you could actually do this formulaically. If you took, let's say, point M. Point M was negative 3, negative 1. Now you're going to add the point 4, negative 2, right? So I'm going to add the vector direction to the original point. 4 minus 3 is 1. Negative 1 subtract 2 is negative 3. So if this is point M, that's my translation vector. This is M prime. So M prime is 1, negative 3, and sure enough, that's where we landed. So if you would rather do it point by point using a formula, you can do it that way too. 
right? Another way that you could write the translation vector is like this. You could say, I'm going to add four to each of the X coordinates. I'm going to subtract two from each of the Y coordinates. And again, you could do that out by formula one piece at a time. All right, sometimes you may be given the picture and you want to describe the translation vector. That's a possibility as well. How do I know? I pick corresponding points. So this seems like the easiest one to me. I'm going to pick this one here. I'm going to pick that one there. How do I get from one point to the other? I go down one, two, three, four. All right, so I went four units down. And then I went one, two, three units to the right. All right, so I got a couple of options. I could actually just draw the translation vector. Right? Assuming I had a straight edge or something, I could draw myself a nice translation vector. There's a translation vector. All right, so we could just write down four down, three to the right. We could draw a translation vector. What are our other options? Well, which direction is this going in? Down is in the y direction, and right is in the x direction. So I could write this as a vector, sometimes with those arrows on top of the vector, to say this is going three to the right and four down, right? Even though we wrote the four down first, down is actually in the y direction and is negative. Three is in the x direction and is positive. So we could also write it like this. We're adding three to the x's. We're subtracting four from the y's. So I have a couple of options. I could write it down in words. I could draw it out as a nice vector arrow with a straight edge, preferably. I could write out in vector form. If it says give the translation vector, then usually this is what they're looking for. And then the fourth option is to write it out. For each x-coordinate, I'm going to add 3. For each y-coordinate, I'm going to subtract 4. And you can try this a couple of times, see if it works. Go 3 units to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4 units down. And sure enough, we've gone from b to b prime. And you can do that for all the points on here. All right, what if we want to take two reflections and translate them? So instead of thinking of a translation as moving by a vector going down and over by a certain amount, what if we think of a translation as reflecting something twice? Now, I'm going to jump ahead for a second. Yes, I actually did scan a copy of our protractor. In case you haven't used protractors in a while, when you set up your protractor, whatever point you're trying to reflect or do something to, that has to be this point here in the middle. All right. And then you're going to try to line up that line that you're reflecting across right over here. So this thing here then becomes your reflection line, right? If your line of reflection is here, you're going to line it up here. Then you're going to set it up so that the points, maybe you have a point over here, you're going to reflect that across the line over here. You're going to not only set this up so that the protractor is on 90 degrees, meaning that if this is your reflection line, you want to reflect over that line that's measured at 90 degrees. Then the second thing you would want to do is measure. So however far it is away from the line on this side, right? So maybe this is your point A. You would want it to be the same distance on the other side. So this point over here becomes your A prime. Now, I don't have the ability to rotate this thing. Oftentimes when you reflect these things, you're going to be reflecting them across lines that are not straight up and down. But that's all right. Just tilt the protractor so that that line of reflection is on 90 degrees and then measure it out. So however far it is from here to there is going to be the same distance over there. All right, so that's how you reflect these things. If you want to give it a try, put your protractor so that the protractor is at the 90 degree mark up here, right? which means that the thing is going to match up with one point over here, one point over there, and then roughly the protractor will end up like this. But again, you want that hole in the middle to be over here. You want the line that we were talking about, that line on the protractor to be lined up here. So there's your A, measure the distance, there's your A prime. Then for this one, you should be able to slide the protractor down. You'll see that you've got a point B over here and a B prime over there, a C and a D. Look at these two drawings here, right? Here's the original, right? This one is what we would call the pre-image. So the pre-image is orientated so it goes A, B, C, D. If you think of a clock, A, B, C, D is going clockwise. Right? Look what happens with the reflection. The reflection does not go clockwise. The reflection goes counterclockwise. So A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, that thing goes counterclockwise. Well, what happens if we take this A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, and we reflect that across this new line S? When you do that, you realize that this final picture, this image over here, is in exactly the same orientation as the original one, right? A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, D double prime goes back to being clockwise. 
So the original one was clockwise. The first reflection was counterclockwise. The second one is back to being clockwise. All right. You'll also notice when you reflect it that the points that are closest to the line of reflection move the least. The ones that are the furthest away move the most. So point D is actually on the line of reflection. So that doesn't move at all. That stays right where it is. Point B is the furthest away here. So in the first reflection is furthest away on the other side. Then when you reflect it across line S, now B is the closest point. So B and B prime are the closest points to each other. D and D double prime, or actually I should say D prime and D double prime are the furthest away from each other because one is all the way here on line T, the other moves all the way out there. So you can translate it instead of by a vector, you can translate it by reflecting something over two lines that are parallel to each other, right? S and T are parallel to each other. And now you've got two reflections that produce a translation. All right, so we've talked about translations. I talked a little bit about reflections. How about a rotation? Okay, a rotation holds the center fixed and rotates it by a certain number of degrees. So for rotations, you're going to need a little protractor so that you can rotate it by whatever number of degrees it gives you. Now, the easiest rotations are ones that are done on graph paper, or dot paper, and if they're nice 90 degree rotations, then that's a little bit easier to do than, let's say, a 43 degree rotation. All right, when you rotate something, it's the, the center stays fixed, and then you rotate it around that center. So if you're going to rotate it by, let's say, 40 degrees, if there's your point A, then you're going to put your protractor so that that's the center, right? That's where the little hole goes. And then you would rotate it. You would move it 43 degrees over here. And then you would measure the distance. Whatever distance this is over here, you would draw another segment the same distance, and there would be your A prime. So it's a matter of starting at the center, draw out this way, measure, draw out that way. And whatever distance that is, that distance should be the same. If you mess with the distance, your figure is not going to look like the original one. All right, so here's an example. You've got triangle ABC. There's the center of the rotation O. How do you rotate that by whatever number of degrees is? I stole this from the book. I don't know what the number of degrees is. Okay, so we're going to rotate it about the center. So I'm going to take the segment from O to C. All right, and then whatever number of degrees they gave me, I would draw out an angle of that many degrees keeping the distance here the same as the distance there. So you rotate it that many degrees, there's your C prime. Take B, rotate it that many degrees, right? So draw a segment from O to B, and then draw that same segment from O to B prime, and then do the same thing from O to A and O to A prime, and you'll end up with, in this case, the rotation went clockwise. And so it's exactly the same figure in the sense that it's the same shape, it's got the same angle measures, it's got the same side lengths, the only thing that's different is its orientation, right? It's, it's oriented a little bit differently than it was before. All right, how about this one? This one's done on a piece of dot paper, so it's a little bit easier to follow along. This one, we're going to do a 90-degree rotation. And so maybe this is one that you should have printed out as well. Um, if you have a, a tablet or something that you're writing on, that might make it easier too. Look at this rotation. It's 90 degrees. So this shouldn't be too bad. I should be able to draw that line from O to B, Right, from O to B like this, and then draw out something that's 90 degrees. So you realize that if I went two dots this way, I just have to go two dots the other way, and there's my B prime. So I've created an angle measure of 90 degrees. Okay. Now do the same thing here. Go from O to A. Right. It looks like I can go from O to A that way too. And make that my A prime. So if you put your protractor on O, line it up flat from O to A, measure out 90 degrees, draw it from O to A prime. And now, once you have that, you realize where point C goes. If it's horizontal here from A to C, then it's horizontal here from A to C as well. And there's my C prime. All right. And so this is my new triangle. I know I got a lot of lines out here. I know how to get rid of the other ones. So here's your one side of your new triangle. Here's the second side of your new triangle. Here's the third side of your new triangle. All right. So it's the same as the original triangle, right? It's got the same side lengths. It's got the same angle measures. The only difference is we've rotated that thing 90 degrees by taking each one and rotating it 90 degrees about that center point O. Right? If I move that center point O, 
what happened is I would change the distance and this thing would either come closer to the original or go further away. But conveniently for this example, it fits perfectly on that dot paper. All right, and there, if you hit the slide one more time, you'll actually see the answer. All right, special rotations. If you rotate something 360 degrees, you get right back where you started. There was once a story I heard about a basketball coach who said, we're going to turn this team around 360 degrees. Well, if you do that, you're back to where you started. So it's not called an identity transformation because when you rotate something 360 degrees, it gets back to where it started. It doesn't matter what the center of rotation is. It's exactly the same figure. Rotate it 180 degrees, you get what we call a half turn, which would make sense, right? If a full turn is 360 degrees, a half turn is 180 degrees. All right, a couple more things that have to do with rotating things around, okay? And that is, we're going to take a look at perpendicular lines. We had looked at rotations around 90 degree angles, right, a couple of minutes ago. What if I have these two perpendicular lines and I want to graph them? You notice that I kind of gave the answer away, right? The two lines are perpendicular to each other. So, so I don't have a piece of graph paper. I don't want to restart this video. If I graph y equals 2x plus 1, it's got a y-intercept of 1 and then a pretty steep slope, right? Up 2 to the right 1, up 2 to the right 1. Negative 1 half x plus 1 starts here, again, at 1 and goes down 1 and to the right 2. So when I get done, I end up with two lines that are perpendicular to each other. How do I know that they're perpendicular to each other? I could have told you just by looking at their slopes over here. That's got a slope of negative one half. That's got a slope of positive two. If two lines are perpendicular, their slopes are opposite reciprocals, right? So one of the lines has a slope of two. The other line has a slope of one, negative one half. So when you say reciprocal, you mean flip it over. So like three fourths and four thirds are reciprocals. The reason that I'm using the term opposite reciprocals is because you're going to put a negative sign in front of it, but I don't want to say negative because let's say this one was negative. The opposite reciprocal then is a positive number. The opposite reciprocal is positive four thirds. So opposite reciprocal means change the sign and flip it over. All right, these two guys down here, how do I know if those things are actually perpendicular to each other? And by the way, they don't have to have the same y-intercept. I just snagged a couple lines that had the same y-intercept, but they don't have to have the same y-intercept. If I want to find out if these two lines are perpendicular, look at the two slopes. I see right away the two signs are different. That's good. That's step one. But how do I know if they're actually opposite reciprocals? Eh, take a calculator and divide them. So do one divided by 1.27. And when I do that, I get 0.787. So at least to me, to three decimal places, I'm convinced that if I take 1 over 1.27, then I'll get 0 0.787. And so, yes, they're perpendicular because not only are they reciprocals of each other, but they are opposite reciprocals. I've got that line there. The last slide in here, and then I'm going to break apart and do 13.2 as a separate video. These slopes of perpendicular lines work like this. It says two lines, neither of which is vertical, because vertical and horizontal lines are automatically perpendicular to each other. So if you have a horizontal line and a vertical line, those two things are perpendicular to each other automatically. Right? It says it's true only if there are two slopes. We're calling them slope one and slope two. So here's slope one, there's slope two. They satisfy the condition that the product is equal to negative one. So did you notice that when I had negative one half and positive two, I could have multiplied those two things together and gotten negative one. Just like the two examples I did with decimals on the other page, I could have multiplied the two decimals together and gotten negative one. So that's another way to do it too. If you don't want to think of opposite reciprocals, opposite reciprocals, when you multiply them, gives you negative one. Vertical lines don't have a slope. Sometimes we say they're undefined. Um, a slope of zero is a horizontal line. So those two things are automatically perpendicular to each other. Now, why are we talking about this here? Because if figures are attached to perpendicular lines that have a point in common, they undergo a 90 degree rotation. So if you take a look at this picture here, I've got two triangles, one triangle down the bottom here, one triangle up at the top here. So this is my original one, right? This is ABC. These are my A prime. So look at these two lines. These two lines are perpendicular to each other. If I look at the slopes, the slope of this line is B over A, right? Remember that slope is change in Y over change in X. So tell me how much the Y has changed, tell me how much the X has changed, and then I can tell you what the slope is. So here, the change in Y is B, right? That's my change in Y. 
down here, this over here is my change in x because I'm walking across the x's, I'm walking up the y's. Change in y over change in x is b over a. If you look at these guys over here, this is your change in x, right? That's how far left and right I'm going. This thing over here is your change in y. If I want the slope there, change in y over change in x is a over negative b. You'll notice that those two slopes are perpendicular. If I want to multiply them together to show that, I could do b over a times a over negative b, and I would get ab over negative ab, which is negative 1. And so, yes, they are perpendicular to each other. And by that, then, these two triangles have undergone a 90-degree rotation with O as the center. All right, and that's the end of 13.1. We'll do 13.2 as a separate video.